Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again for the next part of our Microsoft Excel 2013 tutorial. This video around, we're going to be looking at formatting our spreadsheets in a certain ways, okay? Making it look a lot prettier than it really is right now. So, the first thing I quickly want to show you guys, I've added the six months, okay? And I actually put the real data in there for my area. But let's quickly change this temp to temperature, okay? And you saw in the last video, I actually got cut off and I changed it back for that reason. Now you can actually change the size of your columns and your rows. So the column widths can be changed in a couple of ways. And the easiest way really I find is just to put your cursor between the two columns you want to change. So for example, if I'm resizing B, I'm going to put my cursor here, okay, on the end of the B column. And if I click and drag, you see it creates a larger column. Now, there is actually another way that you can resize these as well. You'll see that Rainfall probably is taking a bit too much space. It doesn't need that much to it, really. So if I put my cursor here again, but instead of clicking and dragging this time, I'm just going to double click, okay? And it's going to resize. Now, the reason it did that is because this cell here is quite large, and it tries to resize to every single cell in the list, okay? So I can just change that one manually, and I'll show you the double click here. Okay, you'll see it tries to narrow down or widen your column just enough so every single cell gets enough space for itself. Okay, so there's a manual adjustment and there's that automatic adjustment. Other ways you can do it, if you come up here, you've got the format button and it's got row heights, auto fit row heights and column widths. So changing a row height is the exact same thing as changing the column width. You simply click and you drag to make it a higher row. Okay, we're not going to use that just yet, but that's pretty much how you would do it. And again, double click and it will do an automatic height for your row. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make this look a little bit prettier, this table. I want to put in a heading at the top here, just make it look nice. Okay, and then we're going to color it in and just make it look heaps better. So the first thing I want to do is actually insert a row above month temperature and rainfall. So I'm going to do one of two things. I can either right click on the number one here with the mouse and click insert. That's going to insert a whole row above where we are, just like so. The other way of doing that, if I quickly undo, is I can just simply put my cursor in this box. There's an insert button up here. If I click on the drop down, there's insert row. And it does the exact same thing. It's actually no different whichever way you choose. Okay. Now I'm just going to quickly type in a heading. So let's go... 2014 slash 2015 Bathurst weather data. Awesome. Okay. So the reason it's 2014 and 15 is because it's only September, guys. And these three are from last year. Okay. So I want to make this a nice big heading. But before I do, I'm going to adjust my columns by double clicking again. And you'll notice that it's resized it because cell A1 is actually quite large. The other thing you may have thought when you saw this originally, is that when you type in text that's too long, it actually just fills, spills over into the next cells. And the only, reason it, <coughs> excuse me, the only reason it does that is because there's no content in B1. If there was something in this box, it actually cuts off the content in A1. All right. So if you ever have this problem where you can't see all of your content, it's because your cell is just plain not wide enough for the content. So to get around this issue, I'm going to get rid of my something first with the delete key. What you do is you do a merge. So we can actually take multiple cells and merge them into one. Okay, because this header only belongs in A1, but I want it to span. I want it to go across A1, B1, and C1 as well. And all I need to click is this merge and center button under alignment. Okay, so it takes multiple cells and puts it in there as a label. Again, you'll see it's not wide enough, so I'm just going to widen up the cells a little bit, each one. And our header, and when I click on it now, you'll see that it selects all of A1, B1, and C1 in one hit. Okay, technically this cell is actually only A1, but A1 now spans across those three, if that makes sense. You'll also see this is highlighted to indicate that we have actually used it, and if I click it again, it's going to turn it off. Okay, but I want to leave it on for this one anyway. Okay, the second thing you'll probably notice, this one here is spilling over, but I don't really want to merge those cells here. That's a, 
that's a strange spot to do a Mergent Center, especially because Mergent Center is really used for headings at the top of your um, sheets. What I'm going to use for this guy is wrap text. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn this row into what's, a, what's called a multi-line row. So if I click on this button here, you see it puts it all in one cell and it wraps it down so you can see it. If you don't like the way that's viewed, I can just simply stretch it out a tiny bit. That looks pretty nice. And I can do the auto resize again by double clicking. And it puts it in a nice, neat box there. Okay. And that there is how you adjust all of your stuff, create headings and things like that. Now, the last thing really to do is to spice this up. This looks terrible. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and just highlight things and whatever. A couple of ways you can format tables of data. So I could highlight this table here without the heading, and I'll tell you why in a second. And I could actually use the format as table button and select any of these pre-built, I suppose, themes or formats, whatever you want to call them. So let's say I like this one. Simply click it, go yes. And you see it nicely formatted with different colors and different headings. It even gives you drop downs, and we'll talk about those later. They're called filters. Okay, I'm actually not going to use this at all this video. I was just quickly demonstrating you can do that. I really don't like them, to be honest. I don't think they're that great. Not that I'm any better, but I still don't think they're great. You can change anything you want up here in the font and the alignment box. Okay, so for example, I obviously want a bigger heading for this. So I'm going to change the size about 26 and I'm going to wrap text come on auto size work with me mate auto size wasn't working so I'm just going to scroll it down all right that's nice and big there all right I might make it a little bit wider because again there we go that's not too bad all right move him up and that's simply it. you can change the size there you can also change the actual font face that you're using so we can go through and choose something that maybe is a little bit better for headings. There we go. Impact. Oh, yeah. All right. And then you can go through and you can do all the things that you would do in Word. So you can bold. Okay. We're going to upsize them a little bit. I'm going to auto size these guys. No, I don't like that being over like that. Move it like that. Move him. Bit of space. All right. Beauty. Okay. And... Then we can color in all these guys. So I'm going to color in the background of the heading. So let's do a nice deep gray. And then these headings can be a lighter gray over here. Okay. That's starting to look a little bit better, I reckon. Okay. And then we might even change the size of the fonts. These ones will make them a little bit bigger again. These ones I'll make all of these. So you can see I've selected multiple cells and I'm changing the sizes all together in one hit. I'm going to italicize this guy because he's a bit more of a comment down the bottom. Okay, and everything is starting to look a lot nicer. So you can actually change the color of the background and you can change the color of the foreground or whatever is called the, the text color as well. Just like so. Okay, anything you could do in Word, you can basically do in Excel by clicking on that little button just here. So you do your fly out. And you've got heaps and heaps of options you can go through there. All right. Now, I've pretty much rushed through that because I'm not being too... Oh, I am sort of assuming a bit here. But I assume people know how to format things. And you know what colors you want to do things in. Now, the one thing I don't like is how these numbers are landing on the right-hand side. And the headings are landing on the left-hand side. I really don't like that. I think numbers look really good if they're centered right down the middle okay sometimes depends on what kind of numbers you're working with so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all these bad boys these two columns here and I'm gonna select this alignment which is the center alignment okay and it's as simple as that so you've got a number of settings you've got the left you got center and you got right okay I like center for some reason you probably don't that's your call and you've also got the vertical alignment so this one is the bottom middle and then the top of your cell so for example this is a pretty big cell so I'm just gonna put something in here like I always do and you can change it from the bottom of the cell to the middle to the top just like that the other thing you can change which I use a lot for big spreadsheets is your text direction or orientation okay it actually allows your words to travel up vertically and horizontally and even at an angle if you prefer 
okay? Sometimes it's a really good space saver if your headings are, I reckon, like that, if they're vertical, all right? I've never really thought about using the counterclockwise or the angled ones. But anyway, it's entirely up to you for that one. And there are your alignment options just there. The last thing is, you can see a little gray outline on every single one of these cells, but there actually is no border around these cells. And I can demonstrate this by just quickly going to the print screen. This is what my document would look like if I printed it right now. Okay. We'll get to printing options in a very a much, much later down the road, okay? But my point is, you can see that there's no lines separating all this data. I actually think lines are really good. They're very neat in adding a bit of detail to your printout. So what I'm going to do, and I got these dotted lines because I just went to the print dialog. I wish they wouldn't come up, but we're stuck with them now. I'm going to highlight all of this, just like so, for a month. So A2 all the way down to C14. Okay, and I'm going to be looking at the border. And you can change it just by clicking on this guy. So if we click the drop down, you've got heaps of borders you can play with. So if I go thick black box around the outside, we now get a big black outline around that data. Okay, I can even add an inside border. So let's just go do, 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 all borders. Okay. And you can see we've got borders now surrounding every single one of these. If you're the kind of person that likes to just see the, the horizontal lines rather than seeing the verticals, you can even do that if you wanted. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn these borders off for the moment. And I'm going to right click on my selection and go down to format cells. Okay. And now if I go to the border tab, we have heaps of options here that we can choose from. This is the line style that you want to pick. And these are the borders for your cells. Okay. So for example, this is the default line here. If I select the middle line, this is me just doing the inside line. So you can see there's no border around the outside of that. I'm going to highlight again, go back into it. Okay, I don't like, the, so let's take off that line. And let's put on the bottom and the top lines. And you can see now we only have horizontal lines. Okay, now let's say I just want to get the outside lines or the vertical ones rather than the insides. So that's actually quite easy. Once again, highlight, right click, and format cells. And I'm just going to click on the outsides and leave this one in the middle blank. So that one and that one. And if I go to print, you can see it's given us a border down the sides. So the borders are really something interesting because you can go into all these different styles. You can even change the colors of them. So if I go to this line, and put these lines in. Oops, I was going to change the color, wasn't I? Purple, why not? Wow, how pretty is that? <laughs> That's but ugly. But you get the point. So you can actually change the styles of the borders quite a fair bit when you get into it, okay? And there's these automatic presets where you can just change the outline. So just setting the outline of the box or the inside of the box, okay? And you can even press these buttons here as well. Why would you do that? I have no idea. Sometimes you might want crossed out values to show you know, it's not going to be included or whatever like that. But that's pretty much it for everybody. That's formatting the column sizes, the heights, your actual styles of your buttons and your backgrounds and your borders. It's probably the most important thing is the bordering. Okay. But thank you very much for watching everybody. We're going to continue in video four on the next one. And thank you very much once again. So I'll see you in the next one, people. Bye.